So I'm going to discuss Lenz's law in this video and there are a, a few tips and tricks I have before we actually get into the lesson. If you're not good with using your right hand like this, I am obviously a pro at drawing a right hand. There you go, see that, there's my nails. And knowing that this is the field and then this is the direction of the current. Yeah, if you're good at this, then we can use the right hand. But if you're not so good at figuring this out, that's the palm of my hand, then I will show you a, a way to figure it out. I'm hoping that you've already seen the video on Lenz's Law and what it does. The whole point actually is that if you have a change in field, a magnetic field that's changing, the induced field will be in the opposite direction to the change, to bring it back into equilibrium, to balance it. So what does that mean? If I have a field pointing to the right and it's getting, let's say, stronger, stronger. If I have a field that's getting stronger, that means, and let's say it is going to the right, it's going to oppose the change, which means it wants to push it to the left. It's going to be in the opposite direction. Opposite. Op. Direction. Direction. I'll just write it like that. Opposite direction. Okay. If my field was getting weaker, it's like if it was slowing down. If my field was getting weaker, I'm trying to talk and write at the same time, then that means what will happen? It will be opposing the change. It will want to make it stronger again. So it will have to be in the same direction. The induced field, the induced uh, magnetic field from the current that's being induced will be in the same direction. I'm, I'm hoping that making sense. So let, let's see what I mean. Let's, let's put it to practice here. Here we have a ring that's dropped. Okay, the ring is falling down. It's coming from nothing into a magnetic field. This dot means out of the page. So it is falling into a field going out of the page. So that means it's going into a field, getting stronger. The induced field will be in the opposite direction. This is coming out of the page, so the induced field should be into the page, which is the opposite. And a clue, without having to use the right-hand rule, you can take your X every single time you have into the page. This is always clockwise current. Every time, this is clockwise. Similarly, if you have a field out of the page like this, you can always say, I'll write it here, clockwise. Out of the page is always counterclockwise. C, C, W. Uh, you just point your thumb towards yourself, and if you're looking at the thumb, you can see your fingers are kind of pointing well, counterclockwise. If you point the thumb away from you, you can see your fingers are clockwise. Let's use this to help us understand. Why did I draw that arrow? No idea. Um, okay, what did I say? This is getting stronger, which means that this will be in the opposite direction. Opposite direction, which means X. X is clockwise. So let's go back down here and have a look. This is clockwise. That's wrong. That is correct. And it is not zero because it is induced. Then it passes through a constant field. If the field is constant, there is no change. No change at all. So that means in location two, there will be nothing. And nothing. Clockwise wrong, wrong, because it's constant. There is no change. But then it leaves the field. I've kind of got the answer. It leaves the field, getting weaker. So let's follow the same steps. I'm leaving the field, so it's getting weaker. It should be in the same direction. This direction is out, it'll be the same direction. That means out is counterclockwise. And we can see right here for part A, counterclockwise. All three ticks are for part A. Now we know this is counterclockwise. We can keep trying some more examples. There'll be some more coming up. So let's see what's happening here. A steady current is flowing through. It's saying which will not produce an induced current. So we do not want the field to get weaker or stronger. And of course, if you remember, the field or the flux, I should say, is actually a change of flux. That includes, change of flux, the field, the area, and the cos of the angle, cos theta. So the angle is important, the area is important, and the field is important. Moving it away from the wire, moving it away from the wire, I've seen something like this, away from the wire, like this one here, it's getting weaker because I'm leaving the wire. That will induce a current, so it won't be this option then, it cannot be that one. Moving it parallel to the wire, like for example in this loop, it's going up parallel to the wire, same like this, it's a constant field. This wire has a constant field, let's say, uh, what is it doing? It's coming out of the page over here, out, 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 out. It's constantly coming out in this case. So that means moving it parallel to the wire will not make a difference. 
Well, actually, that's good because it says not. So that's actually good. I like that one. So that's a good option. So this one, I will take it. So that might be right. Well, that is right. Let's see what's happening here. Increasing the current, okay, increasing the current, that will increase the field. Stronger current means stronger field. So this definitely is going to increase it, so it's not what we're looking for, because it says uh, which will not produce, right? So this will produce, so it's not an option that I want. Rotating around point P, so that is going that way, just spinning. If it's spinning, well, I'm not changing my angle because it's just sitting there spinning. The angle's the same. I'm not changing the area. I'm not changing the beat. Nothing's changing. So this will not induce. So this is an option that I like. So I'm going to pick two and four. Sorry for the noise in the background. Somebody decides to start hammering as soon as I start the video. Apologies. What's happening over here now? Let's look at this. We have a long straight wire, and it's in a rectangular loop. Very nice. The current is being shut off. So you need to know what happens. So first things first, we do know that the current has a field going around, kind of like in a circle. Point your thumb upwards, and you will see your fingers looking like this. On the left side, it's pointing out, but I don't care about that because my loop is on the right side. On the right side, it is pointing in. That's supposed to be an X. It's pointing in. So it's pointing in. Fine. What is it doing? It's being shut off. So if it's being shut off, it must be getting weaker, right? So weaker, the induced field will be the same direction, and we said it's pointing in, so that must be clockwise. So this little here, little, uh, what's this called, little tip here, is going to help us. So now we need to find something that says clockwise, which is right here, B. It's going to be the same direction. Amazing. Let's look at the next question. Question 20 and 21 are linked to this, it seems. So we have um, a rectangular loop being moved to the right. The current in the induced loop is, let's find out. So the current in this loop, let's figure out the direction first, whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Again, same as before, we have a field going around like this. Field is going around like this, which means on the right-hand side, it is into the page, into the page, into the page, all into the page. OK, very nice. It's being moved to the right. I am moving away from it. Again, getting weaker, weaker. Same direction, which will be X, clockwise. So that means my answer could be A, it could be C. That is wrong, and that is wrong. Okay, next we need to figure out whether it's proportional to what? Well, obviously this is the wire that's inducing this current. So it's proportional to this wire, which I've uh, covered the eye up, is proportional to this one over here. So it is proportional to I, so A is correct. This is I2. Well, I2 is the one that's being induced. It is this one here. But this does not depend on itself, of course. It depends on this I right there. So that is question 20. The rectangular loop of wires being moved parallel. Well, I've already said it. Parallel, right here, it doesn't make a difference. Constant field. So in this case, nothing at all. And then, oh my god, that's really driving me up the wall. Um, I might have to shorten this video and try again later. But let's try to get on with the last few questions. The circular loop is placed next to a long straight wire. The current is decreasing. What will it do? Now, this is a little bit about something we did in term two, about parallel wires. The only thing you need to remember, you don't need to go through the whole thing. If you want to, you can check my video out on forces on parallel wires. If they're in the same direction, they will attract. If they are going in opposite directions, they will repel. Okay, this is about forces on parallel wires. The reason I'm mentioning that is because it's talking about attracting and repelling. So the way for me to figure out whether it's being attracted or repelled is to figure out the direction of the current in the loop. So what does it say here? This is going to the left and it is decreasing. So going to the left, point my thumb to the left, is into the page above the wire and it's out of the page below the wire. Out of the page, decreasing. So weaker, same direction, counterclockwise. My current is going to be going counterclockwise. What I care about is this part here, right here, zooming into this. I have a current going to the left. At this point closest to it, it is also going to the left. They're both going to the left at that exact point in time. So that means they should attract according to the rule. They will attract. If they attract, and we've already said that, what is this? This is counterclockwise. So counterclockwise, which means B would be my answer because it says counterclockwise. All right. 
Let's check this next one over here. We have something happening here. Where will there be an induced EMF at this exact moment? Okay, so let's figure this one out now. So the loop is moving to the right, to the top, out of the plane, and the option is it cannot be induced. So it's at this exact point. If it's going to the right, it's still in a constant field, no change. Moving to the top, constant field, no change. Moving out is parallel. Again, constant field, no change cannot be induced. You would have to spin this loop around. You would have to rotate the loop so that it's coming down like this to change the angle. So the B, the A, and all that's changing, the angle can change. So if I change that, it will work. So over here now we have, what do we have here? Plane of a circular loop, perpendicular to a field, very nice. The field goes to zero at a constant rate. The induced voltage, what is the radius of the loop? So we need to think of a formula now. We have a formula sheet. We will check the formula sheet. We have EMF equals negative N B A cos theta uh, over time. So we can try to use this one. Well, we're not going to use the, uh, the cos. We can just stick with the loop. It's only one. So we'll have negative just one multiplied by the change in B. It goes to zero from here. So I'm going to write 0 0.500 minus, uh, so it's final minus initial, right? So this is final and this is the initial. So it's actually the wrong way around. The reason it's important is because it will make it positive. You'll see what I mean in a quick second. Minus 0 0.5. Negative multiplied by a negative will cancel. Multiply this by the area, the area and I'm going to divide that by the time. I'm going to divide that by my time of 0 0.250. I don't need to write that zero. You can, what, what do we have? Wait, 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 1.24, 1.24. You can do shift solve to calculate the answer for my area. Unfortunately, I do not have my calculator with me right now, so you will calculate my area. But it did not ask for the area though, did it? It asked me for a radius. So, of course, if you remember, this is a circle. For a circle, the area will end up being pi r squared. So, you can write the number for the area and then shift solve to get r. Or you can just rearrange the formula by taking the square root of a over pi. And this will give you the radius. And you'll get the answer for that one. Let me just check the answer so I'll tell you what you should get. You should, hopefully, if you do it correctly, 0.44. All right, you can write it in the comments if I got that wrong. Let's move on. Question 25 over here. A conducting rod is sliding on the metal rail, and you're trying to figure out the direction of the current. All right, so in this case, we are changing the area. This is the enclosed area. We only care about the area inside. That's my area. What are we doing? We're making this bigger. It's going to move to the right, perhaps over to here. I am covering extra area, right? My area has increased, I have more field lines. So it's getting stronger. If you remember what that means, stronger, opposite direction. So let's see here, this is X into the page. Opposite direction means out of the page. Out of the page is counterclockwise. So we should say counterclockwise. What does that mean? So if I was to do counterclockwise, it will be something like this. This is counterclockwise. And you can see that through the bar itself, or actually it's asking through the resistor. It's counterclockwise, so it's going to come down through the resistor and then keep going in a circle. So the point is it's coming down through the resistor. We will say B is the answer for this one. After that, we have an airplane with a wingspan of this. That's a distance here, that's a length. And then we have a magnetic field, that's a B. And then this is the EMF. And this is the speed, which is V. So clearly from the labels, I can see I'm just going to use EMF equals B L V sine theta. And well, if I was to draw, or try to draw a plane. OK, here's a plane, all right? Don't make fun of my plane. And I'm going that way. Of course, the Earth is down here. Um, we are perpendicular to the Earth. So that is going to be sine 90, which is equal to 1. I need the speed, so I will just figure out the numbers right now. 0.9. And then you will have the B, 0 0.400 times 10 to the minus 4, multiplied by the length is 60, multiplied by V, which is what I need. Sine 90 is 1. I will ignore it. I will just do this here and solve for V, multiplied by V. 
By doing that, in your calculator, hopefully you will get the answer of 375 meters per second. Very nice. So then, moving on to the next one, a conducting rod sliding by this. You have a field, you need the current. So it's similar to the previous question, but an extra step. I will do EMF equals BLV. Sine theta is going to be perpendicular again, similar idea, so I'm just going to ignore the, the sine. Um, I'm trying to find the EMF first. Then, if I find the EMF, I can calculate the current. So the B, we have a 0 0.66 millitesla. Now I can see the final answer is a milli. I'll, I'll write it times 10 to the minus 3. Milli is minus 3. Multiply that by the length, which is 2 meters. Multiply that by the speed, which is 3. And you'll get your answer for your EMF. Again, sorry about this. I do not have my calculator. I was not prepared, but I am trying my best. So then, you have your EMF. Amazing. You can do I equals the EMF divided by R. I equals this divided by R, which is 220 milli again, times 10 to the minus 3. If you do this, you should get your final answer of 18 milliamps. Now, there's too much commotion going on. I'm going to just stop this video now and continue later, and I will go get my calculator. I promise. Thank you.